Hey everybody, Scal Crafty here again, TGIF. Thank God it's Friday, you made it through yet another week, and it's been a great week. Uh, it's been a, I, I'll tell you, yesterday was a specially good day for me. You ever have that? You ever have just a, a happy day? You wake up, everything's going good. zippity doo da zippity a. <laughs> Remember that? Well, I was, uh, it's all started early this morning. Early this, I, you know, I get to bed late. I only, I went for my walk last night at 4 a.m., you know, it's kind of late to be going for your walk, but I went for my walk and I ran into my little possum buddy. I, you know, I love that little guy. And uh, that possum came up and you know what? He, I make sure there's plenty of cat food. That's what possums eat, cat food, because they need the minerals and and so on. And But they eat anything, you know, possums eat anything. But what I found out my little guy likes is he li likes, like me, he likes a little sweets after his dinner. So, uh, you know, I, I always, after he eats, he kind of hangs out a little bit and I find something to give him. And yesterday, you ever see those Drake's coffee cakes, you know, those uh, little coffee cakes? I gave him one and man, he was, uh, he was beside, he was just having such a ball. He loves it. He really enjoys his little dessert after dinner. I, I mean, who doesn't, right? Uh, speaking of coffee cake, <laughs> You know, it, it brings me back to a time I remember when I was a young man. Uh, there was an old time bakery in College Point called Zach's Bakery. And uh, I remember this guy. Uh, I was young. We just started driving, you know, the bus at the time. I was a young man. And this guy went to the bakery, this old timer. And he, he got a piece of, uh, he said, let me get a crumb cake. And, you know, crumb cakes were, were uh, kind of, I don't know, I guess all around the world, but it was a New York thing. New York was known for their good crumb cakes. And especially if you went to a bakery, they had a lot of crumbs, you know, nothing worse than a crumb cake with no crumbs on it. Anyway, this guy gets a crumb cake and he put, you know, and a coffee and he gets in his bag and he gets in the bus. You know, we were all sitting in the bus and he opens up, he opens up the bag and he reaches in. <laughs> And it was just the cake. <laughs> All the crumbs had fallen off in the bottom of the bag. And he, I remember him complaining and yelling about it. Like, you know, because he pulled out like a, it looked like a sponge, you know. There was nothing on there. And we were all laughing. I thought that was so funny. All the crumbs fell off his crumb cake. And, you know, then what are you going to do, right? I mean, things happen like that. But anyway, it was, like I said, a good day. And uh, this morning I got up. And I saw that a lot of people enjoyed the video that was posted and and visited Brian McGuire's channel. Thank you so much for that. And Brian is ecstatic. You know, that gives you a lot of incentive to do more videos. He has a great shop. It would be great to start up a big shop like that, wouldn't it? And uh, also, I uh, got a notification. Uh, you know, it's funny. YouTube, the notification is a little tricky sometimes, but my buddy... 357 Magdad sent me an email. I said, hey, did you see Stuart's video? I have a, uh, we all have a good friend, Stuart, from uh, Scrounge's Workshop over in Australia. Stuart makes some fantastic videos. Not many, but when he puts them out, they're quality videos. He did a great video on making a uh, kind of a winch for uh, a tailgate lift for his new truck. He got a beautiful new truck, which I don't know why we don't have trucks like that here in the States beautiful you got to see this truck he's got and what a beautiful job he did on his winch and it was like watching a bunch of shorts put together i mean he did so much work in just a short video it was just fantastic so i'll have a link to that in the uh at the end of the video if you want to check that out so uh i'm in a good mood and because of that i've been doing a lot of cleaning up down here trying to get started and uh, let's see what we got to do start off today. Now, as I'm starting to uh, to get to the bottom layer and clean up the shop, I came across some things that I think you might find interesting. Let's talk now, about Most it. of us put a, uh, use an electric motor and have an arbor adapter, you know, that slips onto the end of the motor and you put your, either your wire brush or your, your fiber wheel or something. But what happens, with, especially with the fiber wheels, when they start to get down to the size anymore, that you really can't use them on the motor and they, they become unusable especially with the big washes so what i like to do is uh take off the fiber wheel like this or you could do it with your buffer wheel get rid of the paper over here and now you still have an inch 
of usable fiber wheel. Don't throw it away. Now, what I do is I make these adapters to go into the drill, but very simple to do. You take a bolt, okay? You're gonna cut off the head here, just the head, which is gonna leave you with the shaft like that, and you get two nuts and some washers. Now, you might need a larger washer, and that's where you get a fender washer. A fender washer is nothing more than a larger washer with a small hole. That's what a fender washer is. They come in different sizes. But you can see here, uh, you can make these in all different sizes to fit all different wheels you might have. And uh, I'll show you, we'll mount this one up. Now, remember that hole is a little bigger, obviously. You don't wanna have to use a big one like this because you have to fit it into your drill press or whatever. Whereas normally you could use this and, you know, and fit it in there. But the smaller the, the washer, the more use you'll get out of this. And let me show you, now, well, if your mount. hole that's in the pad is much larger than the arbor that you are making, the bolt, then you just wrap paper around it to fill it in tighten up you see we have a nut on the inside that's backed all the way down and then we put a nut on this side with two washers now all we have to do is cut off the head and we can mount it in a variety of different machines so let's cut the head off and i'll show you how that works now here we go you can see we have we uh chamfered the edge a little bit so it's nice and smooth but there we go we have a little bit of arbor we could mount it uh laterally in the lathe you can see here or we can mount drill it. press. Or you could even mount it in a drill for portable work. Now remember, you could do that with any kind of a wheel that you have. You could use your wire wheels. You can mount it like that to mount into a drill, a lathe, or anything, even a flap sanding. So it's all up to your imagination. Okay, next up, uh, you know, we did the pencil sharpeners uh, last week. A lot of you enjoyed that. And you know, I, I'm a huge fan of uh, the Japanese culture. I've always been a fan of Japanese culture. It's one place I would love to visit. I'm not keen on going too many places in the world, but Japan is one place I would love to see. I love the fact that they, they, in, they love their culture and they maintain their culture. They don't water it down. They don't make any excuses for it. It's either their way or the highway. And I love that. So, but one thing about the Japanese culture is that they don't try and reinvent the wheel. What they'll do is they'll take a, uh, a wheel and they'll try and make it better. So they have a, a history of taking good inventions and trying to perfect them. And uh, speaking of pencil sharpeners, let me show you one of my favorites and I think you'll get a kick out of this. Okay, so this is the pencil sharpener uh, that uh, was given to me by Chris, who was uh, part of the Long Island Tool Collecting Association. He gave this to me. What a beautiful little panda uh, pencil sharpener from Japan. You see Elm is the manufacturer. And um, this here, you, you know I don't like, this is self-feeding. You see, you pull that open like that, you put the pencil in, it self-feeds it. And the reason I was never a big fan of the self-feeding pencil sharpeners is because they would always put dings and dents in it. But what the Japanese did is they covered their rollers with rubber, you could see in there, so it doesn't leave any marks on the pencil. Ingenious. Also, they have a single mill cutting design here, which is a very simple design, easy to service, easy to take out of here. And again, that's how quickly it works. Let me show you how this works. It's just now beautiful. to operate this pencil sharpener, the first thing you would do is you would pull that out until it locks out like that. Take your pencil. You see this one here has a, uh, a tip that's a little bit more acute. And then we'll push this in here like that. Okay. And then all we do is we just wind it. And it will automatically stop. There you go. See, it's not cutting anymore automatically. So now when you take it out and look at it, look at the point we have there. Beautiful, huh? This is one, and again, no marks from the rubber rollers on there. Just beautiful. This is one of my favorite, even though it's kind of, uh, you know, panda looking, but one of my favorite designs. Comes time to clean out the tray. The little tray just pulls out like that. There's your, your cutting, your shavings, and that's where it is. What a nice little unit. Okay, next up, good friend of the show by the name of Angry Patriot said, you know, I want to see you fabricate something. You know, he likes the restorations, but he likes the fabrication. So, so do I. So I said, what, you know, what can we fabricate? Now, remember we did these last week and, and when I was showing you that this is the outside caliper, this is the inside caliper, I showed you a picture of 
female leg calipers were real big years ago. Machinists used to make them themselves. And uh, I said, you know, maybe we could try and knock one of them out. So I took a piece of good old American cardboard. You could tell a good American cardboard. This happens to be cat food. But uh, wow, look at that nice cardboard. Cut out a template, just drew out a template. And uh, let's see if we can transfer this and make one of these calipers. Now, if you notice, calipers tend to be a little bit on the thick side because of uh, because they're so thin, you don't want them to wobble and to bend and stuff. So you need kind of a thick piece of steel. And normally I would go to the, uh, you know, to the store and look for just a, a sheet of steel like this. But um, I'm, I'm trying to make it from what I have scrap around here. This came from an old Schwinn exercise bicycle. It's uh, one of the chain guards or whatever they had. And what I'm going to do, it looks like about the same thickness. It's a uh, good steel, what we're going to do. And then the main thing is, you see here, when we put the template down, that uh, we can get this, there we go. If we put the template down, we can get it, that we can get two pieces, you know, one here, one here. So let's trace it one and cut it out. And remember, is once you have it cut out, don't be so quick to cut them into small pieces because you need a place to clamp it down to hold it as you're making the cuts. So try and think about what cuts you're going to make first until you get to a point where then you can cut it to smaller pieces. Okay, here we are. Now what we're going to do is we have to get it into the shape and we'll put one over the other so that they're uh, equal, but we'll, we'll get it down. We have a lot of uh, finessing to do. We'll do it with a file and we'll do it then with the uh, sander. But you can see this is heavy, you know, hardened steel. That's why I chose this. It's hard steel already. And it's a little pain in the neck to do. I mean, a bandsaw is the way to go, but even a bandsaw is tough uh, unless you have a, a good metal cutting bandsaw, which I don't have. So let's uh, finish this up. Here we go. You can see here we have the, now this is, see that? We filed them together so that they're identical. So this way when they go, they'll look right. Now we got to drill that hole. That hole has to be exact or else these things won't operate the way they're supposed to. So we'll figure out where that hole is going to go. We'll drill them out. But you can see here they're identical. Now we'll do just, you know, clean it up. But you can see it's a lot of work, but this is what it's all about, right? And we're calling this project done. Now, I've never seen a pair of these in person, so I kinda, I'm kind of winging it, but I think they came out good. Check this out, and you see, remember what it looked like, you know, with the steel, but you see, I wanted to use hardened steel, so I didn't have to worry about hardening it. I made a little nut out of brass here, a little nut, and I just used a quarter by 20 here, so you can lock it in if you want, or you can loosen it up a little bit, and now if you wanted to use, again, for inside calipers, you would use the uh, toes. You could see you could bring it down and then you can get about, I guess, this much range, a little bit more, you know, for inside. And if you wanted to use it for outside calipers, you would just cross her legs and now you could see you can get outside calipers using to measure this way. So, uh, and then you just squeeze it down until you, there you go. And so what do you think? Pretty cool, huh? I don't know, I guess years ago, machinists used to knock these out on their lunch break or something. Maybe they stamped it with their initials or something. I don't know. I like it. Pretty good project. So there you go. Angry Patriot wanted to see something fabricated. Another one in the can. Okay, so in closing, that was a fun project. It took a long time. It took like 
like four hours, <laughs> which I know if you, real metal workers out there are going, what, what were you doing the whole time? But you know, when you're an amateur, it takes a long time to do these things, you know? But uh, anyway, like I said, you can get anything done. If you just work at it, you can, all you need is a file and some time, right? Um, anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Check out uh, Stuart, uh, your scrounges workshop. I think you'll really enjoy his video. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great weekend. Bye-bye. <laughs>